This conference this conference will now be recorded. Thank you. Today is Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. I'd like to call this evening's regularly scheduled city council meeting to order. We can all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of America, to the America, to the America, to the Republic, for which it was under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Label. Can I have a roll? Yes. Council Member Boff? Here. Council Member Williams? Present. Council Member Strobin? Here. Council Member Servany? Present. Council Member Hill? Here. Mayor Thornton? Present. Thank you. Next to the consent agenda, if there are no requests for any items to be removed, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have citizens public comment. Clerk, do we have any comments this evening? Yes, we do. There was quite a few that were dedicated to the same subject. So I've gone ahead and just kind of done a little bit of organization here. The first one is a little bit different from the other one. So I'm gonna start with that. This is from Joanne Scigliano. Dear City Council, I'm writing to express my concerns about the proposed traffic signal at 4th Street. Thousands of pedestrians and cyclists die in the United States each year, and car crashes are the leading cause of death among children. As the center grows, the number of subdivisions expand, along with residential streets, which feed into high-speed arterial streets, such as 4th Street. These arterial streets can be dangerous for pedestrians and cyclists, and special consideration should be given to constructing a roundabout instead of a signal. From what I've read, a roundabout is more expensive up front, but I do not think it's possible to put a price on, a, on our residents' safety. This area is a major route for children to get to schools and park. We shouldn't rush into constructing a signal. Let's consider future growth and the need for a safer alternative. We need infrastructure that can handle new traffic, but we should never sacrifice the safety of our children and the center's future. future. <clears throat> So the next ones I'm going to read are all on the same subject. And these are from people who live with inside the city limits. My name is Lynn Nelson. I live in La Center, Washington. I moved to La Center four years ago. My family moved here because we like the small town atmosphere, wide streets, but most of all because of the reputation of the city of La Center Police Department. I'm more than horrified to learn about what has been going on between the mayor and the police department. As I understand it, the mayor has been more than negative in this situation. Perhaps I am even more than disturbed that the letter the mayor put out to the community in September denied that there was any intent via his actions to close down the La Center Police Department. Time has shown the truth. The truth usually does. I don't support someone who is not trustworthy. Due to the negative atmosphere between the mayor and the La Center Police Department, we have now lost our great police chief because of how he was treated. I'm glad he has found a good job opportunity in Iowa, but that is not the point of this email. When you make someone feel unvalued, demonstrate that you don't support their work or the work of the other police officers, then you get resignations. I am sure that privately you feel smug. <laughs> One second, I'm just going to go ahead and mute a caller. Okay. We want our, we want to keep our police department. I'm going to say it again. We want to keep our police department, even if you do not. 
The Clark County Sheriff's Department, while a great department, cannot provide the service we need, nor have the manpower to give us the response time we deserve. Forget about private security. I find that idea to be an absolute joke, a waste of money, and frankly, an idea that this town will not support. You once tried to privatize the sewer operation and lost that battle. The sewer department has even earned an award since that time. Our costs have stayed down and we still have local control. Citizens like me showed up to the council meeting and that plan was dashed. You can expect real citizen action over this situation. The mayor needs to make changes to the way he supports and treats our police department. We cannot afford to lose any more officers. We are all small town with a big heart and we will work to keep our great police department. People are watching your actions. Step up, apologize, do the right thing and mend the hole created in that fence. The next one comes from Carol Gibbons. I guess all of you haven't figured out yet that we the people are not at all happy with your continued effort to rid our beautiful city of our police department. I always thought that the people we elected were supposed to represent the people who elected them. That is not the case with this mayor or this council. As near I can see, you all don't care about we the people of the center at all. I'm not sure what your agenda is on getting rid of our police department, but I will say unequivocally that I am not at all happy where you are taking this. I would have thought that the show of support that the people of the center have for our police department came through loud and clear last fall when many citizens showed up for the support the police demonstration held by the bridge and you, Mayor Thornton, came down to it so you know what I'm talking about. All of you should be ashamed of yourselves. You are not working for we the people at all. This is not what we the people want. With these new developments being built on each end of town and with the affordable housing that's coming in, we can count on there being more crime in our community. How long will it take the farmed out police to get here? Hours, days, or not at all will be my guess. If there is a recall on our elected recall. officials who are not for we the people, then count me in. This next one comes from Stephen and Melissa, I think it's Maley. It was apparent several months ago that the goal of, of the mayor and possibly the entire city council and is to force our outstanding chief Denny out of the department and pursue reducing our police department personnel. I have no idea what ultimately caused the chief to resign, but I have a pretty good guess that his life was made miserable by our mayor and city officials. This is, in my opinion, one of the worst things that could happen to our city, and I'm certain that it will make us less safe, and for that, I resent what has occurred. Chief Denny and his officers have continually done a superb job of keeping La Center as crime-free as possible, and their hard work and dedication should not go unnoticed. So what is your plan now? What outside law enforcement do you guarantee will protect our citizens as well as La Center Police Department? What a thoughtless thing to do, forcing an outstanding officer, our chief of police, to fill the need to resign. My wife and I wish Chief Denny well and truly thank him for his service to our city. You will be missed and may God keep you and yours safe. The next one comes from Sally Alkazen. On August 26, 2020, a motion to approve funding for the La Center Police Department was put forth. The citizens of La Center were originally told this would be a one month project. At one time, citizens were told the assessment would be completed by early October. October, November, and December have all come and gone with no results from this $20,000 expense. And please do not put blame on the resignation of Chief Denny. It's very well known that he submitted his resignation on December 31st, 2020, so that should have no bearing on why it is taking so long to get these results. Have additional funds been incurred because of this delay? Thank you for your time. Okay, so the next group of them come from the county. This is from Susan Mobley. Replacing our police department, which are highly trained and care about our community, and replacing them with private security is not only stupid on your part, but highly dangerous and offensive to our community and the people like myself who have lived here for the last 30 years. If you are going to be a good servant of the people, then it's high time you started listening to what the people have to say and act accordingly. The next one comes from Gloria Jennings. The community of La Center is outraged at the loss of Chief Denny and how he was pushed out just like some of our other 
other officers have been, and others are looking to leave because of how they are being treated. When they are eliminated, they are not being replaced. Our valued officers are not being appreciated. We have less officers yet, the workload doesn't decrease. Most of all, or sorry, most all of the ones with history in the center have been run off. There is a serious lack of transparency from our officials and what their true agenda is. They continue to spend big money on consultants and on the city hall building. If there is a lack of funding, stop squandering it. Get your priorities straight. Maybe the mayor should take a pay reduction or better yet resign so we can get someone with a clean agenda. The next one comes from Heather Blakesley. In my over 20 years of living in La Center, I would like to point out why we love this town. The family value community was awesome and it was extremely safe. But for about the last three to four years, the theft and vandalism has been on a, a stead high increase. We need help and protection. Our homes, cars, and property are not safe anymore. I feel you as a major should be doing more to protect our town. Thank you for your time. Next one comes from Madeline Swihart. I hope Mayor Thornton is aware the last summer two suspicious vehicles pulled into our driveway, approached my nine-year-old brother and talked him into letting them through the gate. This happened twice. I hope Mayor Thornton knows my family and I have a hobo we know by name who keeps coming and breaking into our home. I am a new mother on the outskirts of town and am outraged by the fact that there will be no local police force to come next time. I am incensed that all of us young families just trying to start here with our babies are going to have to suffer lower security and higher crime with no one to defend us simply because of our mayor's petty, progressivist, and deceitful behavior. He's been making decisions that have made our officers miserable for a long time and pressuring, maybe without saying it outright, for the virtue signaling defund the police charade to come to our little town. I, for one, would like the mayor recalled and our chief of police reinstated. Even if the funding is low, why on earth would we shut down the police? That's the very last thing that should be shut down. Even a child could figure that out. Shutting down our police is throwing our safety and our children's safety in the trash. Mayor Thornton needs to go. The next one comes from Dana and Kirk Helt. <clears throat> We are writing today to call attention to the La Center Police Department and the vital role they play in the city of La Center and the surrounding rural communities. We are shocked that the chief of police, Denny, was forced out just like other officers in the force and they are not being replaced. First and foremost, the lives and safety of all communities must have law and order. There seems to be lack of transparency from our officials and money spent on consultants in the city hall building could and should be used for law enforcement, they are a priority. We have lived in the area for 30 years and the city and the rural community continue to grow and expand at an unbelievable pace. The new school is under construction, a new casino at the exit, new neighborhoods, new rural developments and homes. And yes, crime has increased. Our valued officer, officers know the area and the community and therefore are priceless. Now we have fewer officers that have a greater workload. A police force is invaluable to help maintain and serve the citizens of, the, of this community, to keep law and order and to protect our vulnerable citizens, protect our businesses, and they know and understand the needs and get involved in the community which benefits us all and enhances the quality of life for all citizens. Police officers protect the life and property of citizens. They maintain order, catch lawbreakers, and they work to prevent crime. Collaboration between our own police force and the community is essential to ensuring local safety. Police officers are both part of the community they serve and the government protecting that community. The purpose of law enforcement in a free society is to promote public safety and uphold the rule of law so that individual liberty, liberty may flourish. The agenda should be, how do we keep and maintain the listener police? Our community members need to work with our officers, not against them. This is an urgent matter for all citizens of this community. Please keep the Lucenter police. It is our duty to respect and honor all they do for each of us. The next one comes from Candy Falk. With no police chief, what is the mayor trying to accomplish? If the current chief wants to leave, who is going, who is going to want the job? Mr. Mayor, you need to let the community know what your intentions are. After all, you are the leader. The citizens here do not want to live without police protection. 
For years, this has been a peaceful community and needs to remain so. We have people moving here, but would quickly change their minds if they knew they had no protection. It's time for a change. The last two did not give me their addresses, so I'm going to read those real quick. This is from Dave Somdalen. I am a La Center area resident for almost 30 years now, having watched the town grow, prosper, and overcome challenges. I have witnessed the support, security, and peace of mind that our police department and its officers have brought to the citizens of the city and this area. Bringing and nurturing our level of community feeling takes time and personal investment on behalf of the community, these who have been elected by citizens and the police team members. <clears throat> Taking that time and investment away will rip this community wide open and leave it vulnerable to an influx of crime, taking advantage of the loss of continuity that the town's established police force creates and provides. Contracting with security that has little or no listener ownership or bond with our community and only works here because it's a job will deteriorate the livability of our community and discourage our citizens. If you throw away what our community police team and citizens have worked so hard to build, not only will it hurt our citizens, but it will make your attempts to govern our community more challenging than it already is. For those that have chosen the center as a great community to live and raise their families, you will put at risk to you will put at risk to leave. You will cause other folks that are thinking of becoming part of our community to no longer consider La Center as a safe home to raise their families. I would like to believe that you have given a great deal of thought to eliminating La Center's own police department, but such a plan has devastating implications for the future livability of our community that cannot easily be repaired by your successors. And here's the last one. Dear City Council, we have lived here for eight years. Unfortunately, I do not have the time to attend city meetings, but I will do what I can to save our police department. They are number one. They are the number one reason I live in La Center, which makes me proud to live here. No town has ever felt safer to me. 94% increase in crime is unacceptable. People want to live here because of the small town charm, good schools, friendly and caring neighborhoods, and low crime rate. Them moving in gives us more property taxes to continue funding our police department and needs to be the pr a priority in the budget. Please email me if you know of something I can do to save our police and the numbers that you think we don't have to keep them. Robin Rhodes. That's all. Thank you. Sorry, that's the end of the public comment. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the mayor's report. I do have some items I'd like to share with the city council this evening. Uh, first of all, uh, just a reminder that all city offices will be closed on Monday, January 18th in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So um, just a reminder on that. And then also council, uh, February 10th and 11th are the AWC City Action Days, uh, AWC, AWC City Action Days are held annually during the legislative session. And this event allows you the opportunity to interact with colleagues as you educate statewide decision makers about city legislative priorities. The conference this year will be held online and features information, <clears throat> informative live and recorded sessions networking opportunities and interactions with our legislators. If any of the council members would like to attend the virtual, um, again, this, this year it's gonna be virtual, um, for the AWC City Action Days, please contact our manager of administrative services and she will make uh, the arrangements for you. Uh, I highly recommend if, if time allows in your schedules to attend the meetings, uh, I've attended them for several years and they're always great, very informative and uh, well worth our time. Um, I'd just like to share with the council that uh, council member Balf will again serve this year as our joint representative on the CTRAN board. Uh, council member Balf will be representing the cities of La Center, Ridgefield and Yakult as the primary representative. So uh, city of La Center, we have a, a uh, we share a seat on the board with uh, our two neighboring communities. 
Last year, Doug was the alternate on that uh, position, and this year he will be the primary uh, representative representing our three cities. So I really appreciate your continued uh, commitment to the CTRAN board, and uh, we'll look forward to having your monthly reports as we go through the year, Doug, but thank you very much. Uh, and then I just would like to visit with the council for our, for a few minutes about the um, our city council retreat. As you know, uh, every year the city council does have a, a retreat. We typically have it on a Saturday and it, it runs pretty much all day. Uh, because of the restrictions resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, we are not able to meet in person. So as an alternative, I'd like to offer up uh, that we have rather than one day of long meetings to break the retreat up into two hour work sessions and we can have those uh, work sessions um, over the next couple of months and get through our um, uh, agenda for the annual retreat. And I would like to offer up uh, to the council that we have our first uh, work session as part of our retreat on Tuesday, uh, February 16th. So is there any other council members that would not be able to make that date? Yeah, what was that date again? Uh, Tuesday, February 16th. I will not be present uh, that week. Okay, now remember we're doing this virtually, so it doesn't really have to be here in the center. Uh, yeah, but I'll be in the middle of the water uh, in another state. Okay. Um, well, then what I'll do as an alternative, I will send out an a, a invite to the council members so we can get a, a date that will hopefully work for all the council members and we'll get that uh, scheduled as soon as possible. Will that work for the council? Yeah, yeah. that works. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I have one other item here. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, Chief Denny's retirement. Uh, first of all, I want to express my appreciation to Chief Denny for serving as the city's chief of police for the past seven and a half years. Chief Denny has accepted a chief of police position with the city of Burlington, Iowa on December 14, 2020, and he has a, submitted a letter of retirement to me on December 31st, 2020. And Council, I would like to just go ahead. I, uh, well, this letter of retirement is on the screen, but I'll go ahead and read it. It's pretty small print. Um, his letter states, Dear Greg Thornton, it is with a heavy heart that I submit my letter of retirement. The last 7.9 years with the city of the center have been filled with fond memories serving the citizens of the center. However, after 33 years in law enforcement, in the changing environment in Washington state and the uncertainty that the city faces, I feel it's best to allow someone else to serve the citizens of the center. My last day with the city will be on January 29th, 2021, with an effective retirement date from the Washington state law enforcement system of March 16th, 2021. I would be happy to meet with you at your convenience to discuss the transition of my duties to my successor. I wish nothing but the best for the city, the city employees, and the citizens of the center. I have accepted his notice of retirement, and I wish him and Alma the very best as with their move to Burlington and him and the chief in his new position. Also, I just wanted to share that the city does plan to have a more formal recognition and acknowledgement of appreciation for the chief very shortly. The time and place will depend on COVID-19 restrictions. <clears throat> also, Council, I just want to share that the city is currently gathering information about the availability and the selection of an interim chief of police. The city has been communicating with the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs, Washington Criminal Justice Training Center, Washington Department of Retirement, and the Research Center to identify the city's options for finding an interim replacement chief. So we are moving forward with that as well. Um, 
Well, that's all I have for the council this evening. Uh, next on the agenda is the attorney report. City have, as in the city attorney does have a presentation that he's going to be giving to, to us this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, City Council members, and uh, the public. Um, I am going to give you a presentation on Healthy Washington. Uh, I'm going to try and share my screen with you here and bring this presentation up. Okay. Um, so, uh, Healthy Washington is uh, Governor Inslee's uh, new uh, program for recovering from COVID. Uh, the program is called Healthy Washington, a Roadmap to Recovery. <clears throat> the, the basics of the program, and I hope, can you see the screen? Is this? Yes, it um, looks good, Bronson. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Healthy Washington is a regional two-phase approach to uh, recovery. It was uh, became effective uh, this Monday, January 11th. Um, in the program, the state is divided up into eight regions, and the <clears throat> plan tracks four different metrics. Um, every Friday the Department of Health posts the results of the metric tracing on its website, and then the result becomes effective the following Monday. Uh, and we'll go into what those metrics are. Uh, every region uh, in the state starts off the program in phase one, and later in the presentation, I will give you a breakout of what activities are allowed in what phases, but there's just phase one, and phase two to the plan. So here's the uh, regions in the state. There, there's the east, there's the south central, there's the north central, the north, the Puget Sound, the northwest, the west, and the southwest, which includes uh, Wakayakum, Collitz, Clark, Skamania, and Klickitat. So that's, we're in the Southwest region. So we all start off in phase one and to get to phase two, uh, you have to meet uh, four metrics. You have to meet each one of these. And the first metric is that there's a decreasing trend in the 14 day rate of positive uh, COVID cases per 1,000 population. So that decrease is defined as being a reduction of 10% or more compared to the prior 14-day period. The second metric is a decrease, again, a decrease of 10% or more of the rate of new uh, COVID hospital emissions per 100,000 people in the state. The third metric is a uh, Average day, uh, average seven day percent occupancy in the intensive care unit staff beds at a level of under 90%. And then the fourth metric is that the 7% uh, positivity rate uh, for COVID tests is less than 10%. And so I'm going to go through each one of these in a little bit more detail. A couple of them are pretty self evident. But the decreasing trend in the 14-day rate of new COVID cases is uh, tracking whether or not COVID transmission is increasing or decreasing, uh, or is it remaining flat? So what it does is on, on the, uh, the Department of Health looks at the number of cases for the current 14-day, uh, I call it the look back period, so the past 14 days, and they compare the number of new cases of COVID cases uh, to the prior 14 day period. And if it's gone down by 10% or more, then it's a decrease and you've met that criteria. 
flat is again it's zero percent to less than ten percent and it increases uh, more than ten percent so uh, according to uh, the governor's uh, office uh, the latest information that they posted for Southwest Washington uh, on the rate of cases per 100,000, uh, we were at uh, a negative, a reduction of 27%. And that was as of December 26. Now, for each of these metrics, I went onto the Department of Health website this afternoon and tried to find more current information than what's on the governor's website. And I couldn't find any metric tracking for any region. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know if they just haven't done it yet, uh, but I wasn't able to find it. Uh, but according to the governor's website, at least as of December 26, Southwest Washington met this me metric because our decrease was 27%. So then looking at the rate of hospital admissions, um, again, it's that same this 14-day pass period to the prior 14-day pass period uh, and a decrease is again a 10% reduction or more. Um, on this metric, Southwest Washington was a negative two. Uh, so we would be rated as flat and would not be meeting this metric. Um, this metric, the, the uh, Intensive care unit bed capacity uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's whether you're under 90% uh, utilized or not. And Southwest Washington, again, on this metric, uh, as of January 2nd, was at 73%. So we, we did meet this metric as of that date. And then the last metric is the percent of positivity of COVID testing. Again, this compares uh, the number of positive tests, and, and these are the uh, molecular, they're called molecular tests, uh, uh, so um, as opposed to antigen tests or antibody tests. The, the molecular tests can be taken either uh, with the swab that you've seen people getting inserted in their nose and deep all the way back to your throat, or they also can do the molecular test by a mouth swab. So um, on this test, uh, the metrics are, you're either uh, less than 10% positivity, which means you meet the metric, or you're high, over 10%. And Southwest Washington, on this metric, and the most recent data I could find was December 19, we are at 16%. So we're not meeting this metric. So the way Southwest Washington stacks up is we meet two of the metrics, decreasing trend in the number of cases, ICU bed capacity, but we don't meet to the rate of hospital admission and the positivity rate testing. Well, let's say, uh, again, to, to get to phase two, you have to meet all four metrics. Once you're in phase two, you can fall out of phase two and go back to phase one. And again, uh, these metrics are monitored and the results are supposed to be posted to the Department of Health website every Friday, and then they become effective the next Monday. So to stay in phase two, if you get there, you have to meet three of the four metrics. That is, you have to have either a decreasing or a flat trend in your rate of COVID cases. So you either improve or you stay at the same level. Uh, um, you have to have a decreasing or flat uh, rate of the hospital admission. Uh, your average seven day occupancy of ICU has to stay under that 90% level and your positivity rate of testing has to stay less than 10%. So if you meet three of those four, uh, you can stay in phase two. So let's get to uh, what's the difference between phase one and phase two. And these are the activities that are allowed uh, by phase one and phase two. Um, there's a number of the activities listed. I'm not gonna go through them all. Um, I'll just uh, mention three or four of them. 
so we're in phase one right now. In phase one, um, social gathering indoors, phase one is prohibited. In phase two, you can have a maximum of uh, five people from two households. Social gatherings outdoors in phase one, uh, you can have a maximum of 10 people uh, from two different households. And in phase two, that goes up to 15 people, but still only two households. Um, I'm going to skip down to um, restaurants. Uh, phase one, uh, the indoor dining is prohibited. Outdoor, you can have uh, be open till 11 p.m. and have up to six people per table and up to two different households at a table. And then in phase two, restaurants goes to, you can operate at 25% of capacity. Um, an important one for the city of La Center is this one, uh, indoor entertainment establishments. And, and this includes card rooms. So in phase one, uh, a indoor entertainment establishment can uh, have a rental. You can rent uh, your facility for a maximum of six people. Um, in phase two, you can go to 25% occupancy or capacity. Um, so the details of this plan, uh, can be found at the Healthy Washington Plan on, on the uh, link that I have here on this presentation. The governor's proclamation is uh, available at this link. Uh, this PowerPoint is on the city's website on our uh, as an agenda item. So if you want to go back and look at it, uh, you can find it there and you can use these links. So let's see if I can figure out how to unshare my screen. Um, okay. Okay. Is, Thank you very much. Um, you're welcome. Brunson? Brunson? Questions yes. for the city attorney. Yeah, Brunson, this is Randy. Um, are, do you receive the Clark County or Clark Regional Emergency Operations Center situation report? We get it twice a week. It has pretty drilled down stats for Clark County. Uh, no, I don't. Bronson, I can forward that to you or get you signed up for that list. Okay. And again, get him on that list because some of the numbers are, that he had don't quite correspond to what's, and they're not in the right direction, unfortunately. Um, yeah, to this. We get it twice a week, Bronson. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll look for that. Um, remember, this this is done in, not on a county basis, but on a regional basis. So even yeah. if Clark County, you know, meets all these metrics, if other counties in our region uh, don't, they could bring us down with them. Well, we weren't quite as good as, didn't look like we were quite as good as what you had on your agenda, on your report. So. Yeah, take a look at it. It's it's good information. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. I will. Okay. Any, Any other, other questions? questions or comments? Okay, thank you again, Bronson. You're welcome. Next on the agenda are council uh, member comments. Uh, council member Balf. Just thank you, Mayor. Uh, last night was C-Trans January uh, monthly meeting of the Board of Directors. Uh, it was a relatively short meeting with just a few items, and I will, I will highlight those those topics. The, uh, the Mill Plain Bus Rapid Transit System, or uh, BRT, as it's referred to, uh, the project is now at the 90% uh, level of design. Uh, the board approved last night contracting authority to CEO John Donahue to enter into agreements for the required utility relocation work. Uh, his authority is limited to $325,000, but that cost though is covered by the 2021 capital budget. 
The board also took up the topic of the education opportunity pass. This is a, uh, a free transportation pass that will be issued to students at Clark County, uh, at Clark College rather. The, um, uh, the contract will, uh, will last 10 years. And as I mentioned, the students at Clark uh, College will be able to use the CTRAN system at no charge for that 10 year period. Uh, CTRAN anticipates exploring a similar type program with WSU up on the hill. And CEO Donahue had uh, updates on a couple of topics. Um, he explained that there are, there are three, in, three separate groups that are participating in the interstate bridge replacement program. Uh, the primary group is the executive steering group, and that group is comprised of regional governments and, and agencies such as CTRAM. Another group is the community advisory group. And this is comprised of organizational and individual stakeholders in the project. And the third group is the equity advisory group. And that group is made up of members with equity expertise and lived experience. And then Sean's final comment uh, was expressing concern about the ranking of CTRAN employees in the COVID vaccine rollout program. Uh, the uh, the CTRAN employees are placed in the 1B category, and he uh, was, was quite honest, and, and he expressed uh, disappointment that the CTRAN employees are placed higher on the rollout uh, program. The last topic was um, the elections for the new year. Uh, Board of Directors, Chair, Mayor, and McInerney Ogle, mayor of Vancouver, was elected for the second term uh, as chair. And the uh, vice chair is a new vice chair, and that is County Councilor Temple Lentz. A couple more items that I've got. Um, I was down at the bridge on Law Enforcement Appreciation Day on Saturday. I was there for, I don't know, about, about two hours or so. Um, Held a nice blue flag for the for most of that time. It was um, really quite rewarding to hear the um, the horn honking approval that we got from drivers passing by. It was it was amazing. It's quite quite inspiring actually. And um, last, I want to thank Chief Denny for his years of service to the city and to the citizens. Um, I would run into him quite frequently as I'm. Walking around the different neighborhoods, he'd always have a friendly smile and a, and a wave for me. Uh, but one of those encounters stands out in my mind, and that was, I don't know, maybe four years ago or so, I don't remember. And, and he came driving by while I was shoveling snow in my driveway, and he pulled over to chat. It was a nice conversation. I, at one point, I almost had him convinced to get out of the car and help me shovel, but he, he, I just couldn't quite get him to do that. But I will, I will always remember that. And I want to thank you very much, Chief. Appreciate what you've done for us. And that's all I've got tonight. Thank you. Uh, next, Council Member Williams. Hey, good evening. Um, uh, just a few comments. Um, uh, today I was out driving around town and I went down to the boat ramp, uh, Pollock Park launch facility. It's under quite a bit of water. Pollock Road had uh, Apparently took it pretty hard last night with the wind. Uh, a lot of a lot of trees down. I shouldn't say trees, limbs, uh, some brush, but it, the road was open. Uh, I did stop at the bridge and uh, walked out to take a look at the water levels and uh, talked to Dave Pettit, one of our city employees, and uh, uh, just about the water level. Had a good conversation with him. Water's up really high. Just. Everybody be careful. I know we've had some road closures. The road to um, Woodland closed because of a mudslide. Of course, there's been a lot in the news, uh, mudslides happening. Hopefully, we're going to dry out now. Uh, my yard's really soaked. So uh, anyway, and then to conclude, uh, I'd like to also thank Chief Denny for all he's done. Uh, I remember when we uh, first time I met him was on an interview with him and uh, uh, his wife, Alma, and he just stood out above everybody else, uh, both of them, uh, the, above the other interviewees we had. Um, you've done great work, you're, you're really gonna be missed. And thank you very much. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Strowman. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to, I, I hope uh, everyone had a good holidays considering the circumstance. Um, Wanted to remind people, uh, being in business, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of 
uh, local businesses go out of business. And I wanted to remind people to support the local establishments as much as possible. Um, there are a lot of people going out of business and losing their means of supporting themselves. Uh, and, and it's pretty important that, that, we are, that we're there for them. Uh, I also want to thank Chief Denny for his service to the city. I think his leadership has made a difference uh, since coming here. And uh, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Cervini. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, I would just like to wish uh, Chief Denny the very best in your new adventures ahead. And um, thank you for your service. It was great to get to know you while you were here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And Council Member Hill. Yes, good evening, uh, council members and, and uh, citizens. Um, again, I would, uh, going along with uh, the other council members, want to again uh, thank uh, Chief Denny for his uh, service uh, to the our, our fine uh, city. And I wish him the best in his retirement and his new job. And one of the things, again, uh, I've always thought, I've been fortunate to meet with uh, Chief Denny several times over the past several years. And he's always been open to meeting. I've always appreciated his time, his uh, opportunity, his willingness to meet and talk and just kind of update me and very open to uh, questions I might be having. And uh, again, uh, that, that meant a lot to me. I appreciate that. So I wish you the very best. Also, uh, again, just to congratulate um, the police uh, officers uh, across our country, particularly here in uh, the center, as we. Uh, we saluted them on National Police Officer Appreciation Day uh, this past Saturday. I missed the bridge uh, opportunity, but uh, appreciate those who did come out and, and uh, partake in that. And so uh, anyways, uh, that's it for me, uh, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have staff reports. Um, we do have st two staff reports on the agenda this evening. Uh, but before we get into that, I would just uh, like to acknowledge that we do have uh, Chief Peeler uh, with Park College Fire Rescue. Uh, he joined us this evening, and it's good to see that uh, he's here on the meeting with us. And like I said, just before we started the meeting, uh, Chief, we will get, get you on the agenda uh, here very soon. So thank you for being here tonight. Uh, so the first staff report we have is uh, the finance uh, department staff report and the administrative service manager will be presenting. Good evening, mayor and council members. The sales tax distribution uh, continues to be strong with December bringing in more than twice as much as 2019 with just over $72,000. While last year in December, we collected $32,832. The city staff was busy last year with public records requests. The police department had 88 requests, while the city had an additional 47 requests. These numbers are average for the police department compared to previous years and more requests than normal for the city. And as I mentioned last month, our audit is complete and we received a favorable audit from the state auditor's office for 17, 18, and 19. After an extremely thorough audit, there were no negative findings, which means there was no fraud or misconduct on the staff's behalf in the areas that the financial audit covered. What was learned from the audit was that there was a lack of consistency on how financial information was processed and documented and a lack of policies and procedures. The decision to hire a CPA firm to help the city correct the longstanding structural problems in finance, which included reconciling the revenues and expenditures with the projected annual budget was invaluable. The firm corrected the problems, provided documented processes, and produced several policies to guide the city moving forward. The CPA firm of Teresa Johnson was invaluable to the city and was integral in the city receiving a favor favorable annual audit. The state auditor's office 
also thoroughly audited the permit and planning fees and processes as part of the 17, 18, and 19 audit. The auditor found a lack of consistency, policies, and procedures in those functions as well. As was identified in the McKay report, the city has not charged the correct plan and permit fees for some time, and there was a lack of official documentation and records. Much had already been done to correct the deficiencies before the auditor arrived, and thus a positive audit. As mentioned last month, in the near future, we will be bringing an updated fee schedule to the council. As for utility billing, the city has been utilizing the services of the Master's Touch to print and mail the monthly utility bill. The Master's Touch serves businesses in over 30 states, including uh, local cities such as Ridgefield. This has allowed the city to become more efficient in our bill processing and saved both time and money. You may have noticed a different look or a new look to your bill, and that is why. Uh, just because you see red on it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's just highlighting what you owe. Uh, previously, it could take a few days to process, print, stuff, and mail the bills. And now we generate the file and send it to them within about an hour. Does Maria, with uh, bringing on a utility billing uh, service on there, is it still the same number you contact the offices in case you have problems with your bill? Correct. They are just printing and mailing it for us. Uh, otherwise, you contact us with questions on the bill. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, Maria. Good report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next staff report we have this evening is the police staff report and Chief Den will be presenting. Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Council and citizens. Um, before I get into my report, if you can indulge me just for a few minutes about, I just wanna thank uh, the citizens and, and the city of La Center for, for everything, for all their support over the years. Uh, that's what kept me here and inspired along with the officers is the tremendous support that we get from the community members. They come out all the time. They're coming by the police department, uh, always uh, very gracious for and, and supportive of our officers. So it, it's been a, a wonderful opportunity and I hope that the, the citizens continue to support their, their police officers because you have a wonderful police department. You have great officers here that are trying to do the best that they can uh, with limited resources and and funding, and uh, they are they are they are very appreciative of all the citizens and what you do and how you stand up for their for, for them in their endeavors. And they're out there doing the right things for the right reasons all the time, okay. and they love the community uh, very much. So they're very, they're very supportive of the citizens and, and vice versa. So I want to thank everyone for the, for the opportunity and getting to know everybody on a friendly basis and being friends with most citizens that I could have contact with over the years. And having that opportunity has been tremendous for me. So thank you again for that. Um, getting into the monthly report. Um, we had 137 calls total for service, 46 of which were officer generated or proactive. Criminal arrests, we had four arrests total, two traffic related arrests, one criminal trespass and one drug arrest. Crimes reported, we had 15 crimes total, one burglary, one assault, three vehicle prowls, one theft, one malicious mischief and one traffic crime. In December, we had one burglary and three vehicle prowls were documented within the city. Of the three vehicle prowls that occurred, all the involved vehicles were left unlocked by their owners. We have been able to reduce the number of vehicle prowls and thefts with the cooperation of the residents and securing their property. As a department, we would like to continue to remind the residents of the center to lock their vehicles and homes and stop leaving valuables in plain view. Only through vigilance will we as a community be able to mitigate crimes and the opportunity committed by in the center. 
In the center for this month of December, the crimes of opportunity as described above were reduced to approximately 60%. We take 39 reports were written, 30 original reports and nine supplemental reports. We had 106 FI entries completed for any activity that did not result in a report or issuance of a citation or infraction. We had 48 traffic stops were conducted. One complaint was received regarding the after hour construction noise at the site of the Nuba Center Middle School. The complaint was addressed by the city without the need for enforcement action. Awards and commendations. Um, Officer Langlos received an exemplary performance award from the Clark County Sheriff's Office for his role in protecting the lives of seven children whose lives were threatened by a parent experienced a mental break. This incident was outlined in November's monthly report. Officer Langlos performed on this call made an impact well beyond the borders of the city. His professionalism provides his testament to the quality of law enforcement personnel who serve the city of the center. If you please take the time to read the attached award documentation as it provides a great detail of the incident and, it, and it's a nice uh, award given to uh, him by the sheriff, Chuck Atkins. So that's appreciated for his work. Traffic emphasis, we focused in the following locations based on traffic patterns and our complaints. We had uh, worked Aspen Avenue with speed violations, Northwest Pacific Highway, the 1500 block, speed and licensing violations, East, East 4th Street, Lockwood Creek, 1000 block and the 2400 block with speed emphasis. Additionally, the traffic speed trailer was deployed in the following locations for continued speed mitigation. Due to the char charging issues with the traffic trailer, it was only deployed in one location in the month of December, and that was East 4th Street, the 900 block. Traffic mitigations for each of these areas consist of patrol emphasis being conducted by the officers at alternating times throughout their shift. The city as a whole continues to experience a reduction of moving violations, which in turn has resulted in safer motor travel for our residents. Officers will continue to conduct a proactive patrol to ensure the safety and community with the, the work and travel within the city. Uh, no community-oriented policing events occurred in the month of December, and we had a high-risk call for service on December 23rd, 2020 at approximately 2100, 2112 hours, multiple agencies were dispatched to a shots fired call at the Ilani Casino and Resort. Officers and deputies were advised by dispatch that an off-duty WSP trooper witnessed a male wearing camo near the Christmas tree at the West Roundabout attempt to force his way into a vehicle being driven by a lone female. The female was able to keep him from entering her vehicle, but as she attempted to drive away, he brandished a gun and fired at her. The facility and property were blocked, locked down in an attempt to locate the gun. Responding agencies was uh, CTP, three officers, CCSO, nine deputies with three sergeants, WSP, two troopers, LCPD, one officer and one sergeant, and Bridgeville Police Department, one officer. Total time invested by LCPD is two hours. Flaring disposition at the conclusion of the investigation, evidence was collected, the suspect remained unidentified and at large. The female victim was not identified or located. Um, so that's it for the police report for, for the month of December. If there's any questions. Thank you, Chief. Um, the report, uh, do we have the award that was presented to Officer Reynolds on the, to be able to pull up on the screen? Okay, I don't see it being pulled up, so I apologize. Well, maybe it was in the agenda. Yeah, yeah. It's in the I read it. There you yeah. go. It's pretty small on my screen, Mayor. I don't know if you want me to read that or not. <laughs> well, I think I think the council members have had an opportunity to read it. I, I just want to acknowledge Officer Langlos, um, congratulate him on this uh, award, and uh, thank him for his continued service to the city of the center that's uh quite remarkable what he achieved with this and uh again it's um we definitely all want to acknowledge that so congratulations to him that's a uh, quite an honor um so thank you for your report chief uh any questions for the chief 
Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Thank you very much, Chief. Thanks for all you what you do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. So next on the agenda this evening, we do have one ordinance and a public hearing. Uh, it's ordinance number 2020-01, uh, an ordinance adopting chapter 18.247 of the Center Municipal Code, the Accessory Dwelling Unit Code, and inclusion of the ADU code for the purpose of regulating ADU development in the center. And this evening, uh, the city contract city planner, Mr. Ethan Spool will be presenting. So Ethan, you have the microphone. Good evening, council. Um, good to be with you again. Can you hear me okay? Yes. You're fine. Be good. Um, so I just want to start off by thanking just fine, Ethan. Very good. I uh, just want to start off by thanking the Planning Commission um, and the City Council for their hard work on this ordinance. Uh, you, write, you might remember that the uh, Council had a workshop on this item on October 14th um, of last year and the Planning Commission spent um, probably five to six different sessions uh, talking about this ADU ordinance and their, their input was um, invaluable um, so since that october 14th workshop we've made a couple of changes to the adu ordinance um, really really just a few um, that came from that workshop but then also the subsequent planning commission meeting in november um, and so we'll describe those changes for you tonight um, and with me here uh, uh, one of my coworkers, fellow planners from WSP is uh, Sam Roberts. And Sam was instrumental in drafting the uh, ADU ordinance. He's primarily responsible for that and, and did a lot of work with the Planning Commission on it. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Sam Roberts and he's going to uh, present the staff report for you. I will be available um, during the staff report or after for questions. Thank you. Thanks, Ethan. Uh, good everyone. Good evening, everyone. Can y'all hear me well? You're fine. Okay, so uh, as the city council has already reviewed this code once at the workshop, my presentation tonight will really focus on what has changed in the draft code since that workshop, um, as Ethan just mentioned. Um, so I'm going to go through the sections uh, on the screen here. Um, you can also find the draft code on page 88 of the agenda. Um, so moving on to the code in the establishment section, getting into the changes. Um, under establishment, the council commented that there needs to be uh, a specific prohibition on ADUs being established through a new or existing manufactured home. And so a new standard has been added under the establishment section that includes this prohibition. That's number two here. Uh, also under establishment, standard 1E was added, allowing for an ADU to be established above a structure, such as a, a garage or a workshop. Um, so just an additional allowance there for establishing ADUs. Um, and lastly, in establishment, you'll see under standard 1D, um, it includes the allowance of garage conversions for ADUs. Um, at the workshop, there were some reservations from members of the council regarding garage conversions and their appearance, including the removal of a garage door and replacement with a regular door and windows, for example. So as such, we added a design standard specifically for garage conversions to address these concerns, uh, which I will discuss in a minute here. Uh, so moving on to some of the development standards, number four, which deals with setbacks and lot coverage. Um, as just mentioned, under establishment, we added text that ADUs could be established above a structure. And so a new standard that came out of the last planning commission meeting was that for ADUs that are constructed above a garage, um, 
the ADU shall be set back a minimum of 18 inches from the garage's front facade. Um, so this was proposed for aesthetic reasons and at the commission meeting, somebody brought in pictures and it, and it did look pretty good um, with that setback there. Um, also under setbacks in lot coverage, um, from the council workshop, the council suggested clarifying that only the footprint of the ADU building could exceed the maximum lot coverage requirement for a lot. Um, so hypothetically, someone couldn't pave their entire backyard and say it was for the ADU. Um, so stand, development standard 4E has just been uh, updated to make this distinction for building footprint. So again, pretty minor there. Uh, moving on to the height standard, um, as originally presented the council at the workshop, the proposed maximum height for an ADU was 20 feet. Uh, however, the council commented that may be too limited for a two-story ADU or an above garage ADU. Uh, conversely, there was also some concern of increasing the maximum height of an ADU, which may result in a taller structure than a single family home. Um, and so to accommodate both of these concerns, Development Standard 5A has been updated to state that the maximum building height for detached ADUs shall not be taller than the single family home or 25 feet. So we bump that up five feet, um, whichever is less. And then lastly, getting back to garage conversions here under architectural design, um, as mentioned, and based on further discussion with the Planning Commission, garage conversion ADUs have been uh, left in the code with an, this added standard ensuring well-designed conversions. Um, and that's here in 6B. So this reads as follows. For ADUs that are established by conversion of an existing garage facing a street, the garage door shall remain to match the aesthetic of the neighborhood with the primary entrance uh, for the ADU established on the side uh, of the ADU. Alternatively, an applicant could, can remove the garage door uh, if one, the alterations match the design of the single family dwelling, two, the front facing garages are not, if front facing garages are not typical in that neighborhood, and three, at least one window is provided um, on the front facing wall. And so, as with the rest of the development standards here, if somebody were to propose one of these uses, um, city staff during the permit review would review these uh, design standards for compliance. Uh, with that, that kind of sums up the changes to the draft ADU code um, since the last time the council saw it at the workshop. Um, so we're gonna, city staff, myself and Ethan are gonna open it up here for any questions uh, for the city council, from the city council at this time on the ADU code. You were gonna show some of the garage doors or, or something at that point um, that you said earlier. Do you have anything that you can show for that? I'm sorry, uh, council member Stubborn, what was the question? Uh, in one of the areas in here that I think Doug and I were discussing uh, during some of this, uh, you guys had just mentioned that it was something to do with the garage doors and you were going to show us some of the design features that were in there that you were allowing. Right. Yeah, we don't have pictures of those tonight. Um, we could certainly provide them after the meeting if that's if that's desired. Oh, that would be helpful. And Doug here. Um, also on the, um, the the front facing part of a garage conversion, um, it's nice that I, I appreciate seeing that there's a reference to a window requirement. But should we, in a typical you know garage door is uh, well I think 16 16 feet wide if it's a two car uh, garage, should we be specific about a minimum size of that window so somebody doesn't play games and put a little skinny bathroom window in it just to meet the code? Is that something we should consider? Um, I mean, that's certainly something that we could consider. I think it's partly covered by the requirement that it match the design of the single family dwelling. Okay. Uh, and so if somebody proposed uh, a window that was, you know, unusually small, then um, that particular provision would probably allow the city to require a larger one. 
<clears throat> okay. Okay. But overall, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with uh, with the revision that's uh, that's in there, especially with the requirement that the addition um, complement the, the rest of the house. So I'm, I'm pleased to see that. Thank you. Uh, this is this is Randy for Sam and and Ethan both right on the screen where you're at uh, 5A maximum building height uh, shall not be higher than the bill than the house uh, or 25 feet. Should we define that a little farther so they it does include any if there's any mechanical on the roof? Uh, it's not real prevalent in this area, but I mean somebody builds a puts a roof up a flat roof at 25 feet and puts an HVAC unit on it. Right. Yeah, there's there's a definition of building height um, already in the code. And so that's what we would use. Um, and so if that doesn't specify that mechanical units are included within the 25 feet, then we could certainly add that in here if the council um, if the council desires. Well, I just I just again like Doug says, so somebody doesn't play a game. Right. Yep. Yeah, we'd we'd be happy to add that if that's the consensus of the if it needs council. it. If it needs it. Thank you. I did, uh, one other thing, I thought I saw in here something about uh, if a garage door is turned into a front that there's landscaping. Uh, I don't remember Sam saying anything yeah. about that. Right. That was in I, the I staff. That was, kind of cool. that was in the staff report. And so that was a provision that was proposed by Council Member Boff when he visited the Planning Commission um, in November. Um, and we took that into consideration. And what we ended up saying in the staff report was that because of uh, you know a couple things, one, the driveway length um, that the that the landscaping might take up some of the required driveway length um, that we did not include that standard in here um, and in addition uh, we felt like in thinking about it that if you had landscaping that was isolated um, in front of a garage conversion and didn't connect to landscaping that's uh, in you know that's in front of the building in front of the residence otherwise that it might look a little bit funny um so we did not include that and that's why we substituted in the standard that talks about providing uh the window on the on the front facing wall great thank you mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions uh, from the council members or comments before I do open it up for the public hearing? Um, Ethan, uh, this is Bronson. Mm -hmm. uh, I did look at the definition of building height in the code and it uh, specifically excludes mechanical uh, features. Okay. So if the consensus then of council is that those be included, um, then we can specify that here in this standard. Um, and so I think we'd be looking for a motion from you uh, if you decide to approve it here tonight, look, be looking for a motion from you to um, direct us to make that change um, prior, to, prior to the ordinance being finalized. I, I, I will say that that mechanical isn't very typical on the top of residential buildings. It's a little bit more typical for commercial, but um, sometimes you do get that like with a swamp cooler or something. Well, my house in California had it. Um, uh, do, Bronson mentioned it's in our regular code. Should that code be modified uh, so it's consistent? Um, I know that there's definitely some considerations there in terms of the building height definition that the building official Jim Perry and I have been talking about. And so there's probably a longer term code modification project there to marry up the 
uh, definition of building height in, in the building code with the one in the land use code. Um, so, you know, we would, we would probably uh, do that at that time. So for the time being, we should just modify this code if the council agrees to it and then catch up on the, on the regular code later. That's correct. Okay. Okay, so if there's no other questions at this time, I will go ahead and uh, open up the public hearing. It's uh, 7.46. If anyone on the uh, meeting this evening would like to make a comment, uh, it pertains to the ordinance in front of us. If you could please give us your name and address and limit your comments to uh, three minutes. If anybody wants to comment, remember to unmute your microphone. Okay, not uh, not hearing anyone trying to make a public comment. I will go ahead and close the public hearing and turn it back over to council for any further discussion, uh, questions, comments um, before we proceed. I think it's made, uh, they've uh, made a lot of the changes that we've discussed in the past, so uh, I'm okay with the way it sits. Yes, I agree. I'm open to, I, I think that uh, the changes also reflect uh, our, our requests, uh, and uh, I would uh, agree that we should uh, probably put a temporary uh, fix on this uh, ordinance going forward this evening. Now, I'm pleased with the, with the uh, changes that have been uh, added, um, especially since the, since the work session. I'd like to thank the Planning Commission for the hard work they put into this too. I'll second that. Okay. So I appreciate the comments. Um, so, is there a motion that wants to advance, or what are what are we looking for? A motion to? I think we accept the ADU uh, as as this an ordinance. It is. Yeah. Adopt the code, yes. Okay, can we have scroll down to where we have some numbers? Yeah, could you, Kurt, could you please on to the uh, recommended uh, motion by staff? <clears throat> Sarah, do you want me to give you back control here? Uh, yeah, PG. Uh, yeah, it's in the staff report at the bottom of the staff report. Yeah, <laughs> That's enough. Mayor, I'll make a, a motion that we adopt ordinance 2020. Should that say 2021? Yes, correct. That's a ordinance. Yeah. Okay, uh, ordinance 2021. Dash zero one an ordinance adopting chapter 18.247 of the Center Municipal Code, the accessory dwelling unit code, and exclusion of the EDU code for the purpose of regulating ADU development in the endless center. Did he say exclusion or inclusion? And I said inclusion. I'm re reading it okay. off the screen here. Okay, second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance 2021-01, an ordinance adopting chapter 18.247 of the Los Center Municipal Code, the Accessory Dwelling Unit Code, and inclusion of the ADU Code for the purpose of regulating ADU development in Los Center. Do you need to include your amendment, amending? 
on the height. On the mechanical you mentioned before. Well, so the motion is currently made would not include the mechanical equipment uh, language. Um, if there's a motion to adopt the ordinance as presented with the additional language on uh, including mechanical equipment as a limitation on the building height, you could do that. Uh, the alternative would be when we do the Title 18 review later this year, we can address building height and whether or not mechanical equipment is included in building height or not when we modif you know, address the definition of building height. So Bronson, if we had an application to submit it tomorrow, then we would be subject to the definition as it's written right now, right? That that is right. And so if you want to make a, a change in the ADU ordinance to provide that building height includes mechanical equipment, you should make that change now if you want that to be effective currently. Should I rescind my uh, proposal? Well, You've got a motion in a second right now. Um, can we can we amend the motion at this point, Bronson, or should we vote on this and redo it? Or you you can amend the motion at this point. Yes. Okay. okay. I, let me do that. I'll Mayor, I propose we adopt Ordinance 2021-01, an ordinance adopting Chapter 18.247 of the Center Municipal Code, the Accessory Dwelling Unit (ADU) Code and exclusion of the inclusion of the ADU code for the purpose of regulating ADU development in the center with the addition of limitation of height uh, to include mechanical uh, equipment, such that the mechanical equipment could not exceed the maximum building height of 25 feet or the height of the house. I second. Okay. Um. So it's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance number 2021-01, an ordinance adopting chapter 18.247 of the Center Municipal Code, accessory dwelling unit ADU code, and inclusion of the ADU code for the purpose of regulating ADU development of center as amended for the uh, total building, including the mechanical, Ethan, you're going to have to help me out with that language, but or can we just say as amended, Bronson? So I think the motion that was made uh, is sufficiently clear that uh, building height would include mechanical equipment. And uh, so that's the motion. Uh, and if there's a second, you can vote on it and we can make the change to the ordinance. Very good. Okay, this is an ordinance. So if I can get a roll call, please. Council Member Boff? Aye. Council Member Williams? Yes. Council Member Stroven? Yes. Council Member Servany? Yes. Council Member Hill? Yes. Motion carries to approve ordinance 2021-01 unanimously. Um, thank you, Council. Thank you very much, Ethan, Sam. Appreciate the presentation, all your hard work. And I, too, would like to acknowledge the Planning Commission for all their efforts and hard work on bringing this uh, ordinance forward. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Well, that was kind of a rough start to 2021 for the first ordinance of the year, wasn't it? <laughs> well, we're just a little bit out of practice. Okay, so yeah. next on the agenda is under new business. Uh, we have two items this evening. The first one is the Mayor Pro Tem confirmation. Uh, it has been a while since we visited that. Uh, so I thought I would get it on the agenda this evening uh, in front of the council uh, to um, discuss the uh, Mayor Pro Tem position. As you know, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Servany has been the Pro Tem for um, 
the last uh, few years. Uh, I'd like to say that she's done an excellent job. She's always been available in my app. She's of course served on the city council now uh, for several years and uh, council member Servity has also been uh, the previous mayor of the center. So she's done a phenomenal job, um, but I just wanted to bring it back before the council uh, to um, discuss it and see your thoughts about continuing on with that arrangement or if there were any other um, proposals that the council would like to make regarding the mayor pro tem. Well, I think Mayor Cerny is the best qualified, so I would like to see her remain in that position. This is Dennis. Uh, if uh, Councilman uh, Cerny would be willing to continue, I would certainly endorse that. So works for me. <laughs> okay, so maybe if uh, the proper thing to do, if, if I could please get a motion from one of the council members in a second uh, to affirm that Mayor Pro Tem Servany will continue to serve as the Mayor Pro Tem for the City of LaSalle. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. For another two years or three years, four years? You can just include it in your motion. Term limit. You can include it in your motion. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> is, it, is this, uh, uh, Mayor, is this an annual thing? Uh, uh, or are we supposed to do it for more than one uh, longer term? Well, How do I say eternity? No, I mean, I think we can make it for a term. To, uh, I don't, I, I, the, the RCW reference is a biennium, so every two years. But um, again, if okay. you want to make it better than that, longer than that. No, I'll go with what RCW says. Um, Mayor, I make a motion that we, uh, confirm uh, council member serving as mayor pro tem uh, for the t for a term of 24 months. I will second that. Been moved and seconded to confirm uh, mayor pro tems uh, for the position of mayor pro tem for two more years. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Servini. Uh, so the next item we have here on the agenda is the confirmation for our new Planning Commissioner. As you all know, uh, Council Bill uh, was recently appointed here to the City Council. Prior to that, he was on the Planning Commission. When he left, of course, that created a vacancy. Uh, so the city has advertised for a, a new planning commissioner to fill that seat. Um, made a selection, and Mr. Sharon Sharon Elka uh, is, is who I selected to be the planning commissioner. Uh, I do have his um, letter of interest uh, as part of the agenda packet, so hopefully you all have had a chance to look at that. And of course, the council members uh, we did have an opportunity to interview. Mr. Elko Sherry, when he was actually a candidate for the city council as well. So, um, so I'm looking for this evening as a confirmation of his appointment to the planning commission. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I would look for a, mo a motion to approve. Yeah. Motion to approve Sharon Elko Sherry for the city planning commission. And I will second that. It's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Mr. Echo Sherry to the Center Planning Commission. Uh, his, his term will start immediately after the confirmation. Um, if I could please get a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much, Council. Congratulations, Mr. Echo. Yeah. I'm very pleased to announce that you are now on our planning commission. And thank you Welcome. for stepping forward. We appreciate your service. Welcome, Sharon. Yeah. Welcome, Sharon. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. So that pretty much concludes our meeting for this evening. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you, Council. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. I'll second.
We move and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye.